This episode is sponsored by my Patreon. If you want to support what I do here on the channel for as little as $1 a month, check out the link in this video's description. What is going on everybody? My name is John Solo and this is going to be an unusual episode of Astrology Explained. Does that mean you're going to be nice to us this week? Okay, not that unusual. I'm just referring to the fact that we're in the month of Libra, the only sign in Western astrology that's represented by an inanimate object, the scales. What's the significance of that? Well, if you were to ask a sane person, they'd say, I have no idea. What's a Libra? But if you were to take the opposite approach and ask an astrologer, they tell you the stability and balance of the scales has a serious impact on the personality of whomever is born under them. And since I'm one of these people, or technically half of one since I was born on the Libra Scorpio cusp, I'm excited to share my findings on what we're supposedly like. Before I jump into it though, I do have an exciting announcement to make. The Messed Up Origins team and I have recently renovated the Patreon to better reflect the current state of the channel. That means new reward tiers and new rewards. My personal Personal favorites are the behind the scenes podcast solo radio and our exclusive new discord server where we talk about the messed up origins of just about everything. You can access both of these benefits for as little as $1 a month, but higher donations offer other sweet perks like discounts on merch and your name in the credits of every messed up origins episode. Donating is of course completely up to you, but if you want to support these deep dives into mythology and folklore that are only getting more expensive to produce between commissioning artists, licensing fees, paying for subtitles, etc., a little goes a long way. I don't want to weigh this episode down with too much self promo, but if you've enjoyed my content for a while and can spare a dollar a month, consider checking out that Patreon link in the description. Now it's time we dive into the messed up mythology and astrology of Libra. So depending on the calendar you're looking at, Libra is active between September 23rd and October 22nd, or it starts and ends a day later, September 24th and October 23rd. This rule actually applies to all the signs we've talked about so far, but the reason I point it out now is because as a cusp, this has affected me my whole life. Now the name Libra is Latin for weighing scales, which may be what the symbol is supposed to represent, but some claim it actually depicts the rising sun as it enters the equinox. Personally, I'm a fan of both interpretations because both apply to and are inspired by the same phenomenon. The fact that in 1000 BC and prior, the hours of day and night were most balanced during Libra season. What I find especially interesting about Libra though, is that in addition to the sign being placed between Virgo and Scorpio on the calendar, the constellation itself also sits between Virgo and Scorpio. Now you might say that's a given considering these signs are actually active based off the order of their position in the sky as the earth rotates on its axis, but Libra is a special case. Not only was it between Virgo and Scorpio, it was part of them. See, back in the days of the Babylonian Empire around 1000 BC, the Scorpion constellation was significantly larger than it is today, and its claws actually occupied the same space as the Scales constellation. But as time went on, the equinox, which the Scales represented, moved earlier in the year, and when the Greek Empire was established around 800 BC, they decided to just call it the claws, and the scales were considered a thing of the past. That is, until the Romans showed up. They reduced the size of the scorpion, made the scales their own constellation, then naturally associated them with the goddess of justice, who just so happened to sit on their other side, and still does to this day. So yeah, Libra's gone through quite the identity crisis over the past few thousand years. Kind of ironic, considering it's a sign of balance. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the scales of Libra are said to be representative of those born under the constellation. Just like the scales, Librans, or Librarians as I like to call them, are constantly weighing the quality, fairness, and justice of their relationships. Initially, this would seem to imply that Librans are good negotiators since they're so concerned with equality, but what's interesting is that their scales aren't usually in perfect balance. Instead, they're tipped away from the Libran and toward their partner in that particular interaction. What that means is they often perceive the weight of their own sacrifices to be less than whoever they're engaging with and will often give up way too much of themselves to make the other person happy. This doesn't just apply to romantic relationships either. It also happens within their families, when they conduct business. The unfortunate truth is that Libras aren't usually the best at looking out for their own interests. That doesn't mean they don't recognize a bad deal when they see one though. Libras can negotiate on behalf of others extremely well and are actually very good at knowing when they're being taken advantage of. They also have no problem cutting off the source of that imbalance. That's why in medical astrology, the only kind of medicine that you should avoid more than 
and chiropractic, Libra rules over the kidneys, the body scales for filtering out toxic substances. Another interesting point about Libra I wanna share because it really resonates with me in particular is that they blow at making decisions. Because Librans think a little too hard about the pros and cons of each path forward, whether they're choosing what candy to eat at the movie theater or what neighborhood they wanna buy a house in, they make the road they travel on unnecessarily difficult and end up having to apologize to the beautiful wife for being such an indecisive man-child. Did I just reveal too much? Moving on, the scales of Libra have been associated with a number of Greek goddesses, in part because Virgo has been associated with a number of Greek goddesses and she's the one holding them. Astraea and Dyke are two such goddesses, but we already talked about the mythology behind them in the Virgo episode last month. So today I wanna to focus on a deity that we haven't really ever discussed, Themis. You may not recognize the name, but you've probably seen the famous statue of the blindfolded goddess holding a sword in one hand and the scales of justice in the other. It's commonly found in law schools, at courthouses, and the apartments of just about any law student in 2021. Ali and Gina. But what's interesting about that is that while Themis is the goddess of justice and law, her name doesn't refer to the laws made by mankind. The Greeks had a different word for that, Nomos. Instead, the word Themis referred to divine law, those primal unwritten rules of conduct that humans universally should abide by. No killing, no stealing, etc. It's actually believed that, in a scene very similar to Moses coming down the mountain with the commandments, it was Themis who issued these divine laws to mankind through the Oracle of Delphi. Themis was also the first to introduce man to the concept of sacrifice and how to live piously so they wouldn't disrespect the gods and be on the receiving end of their wrath. In note that I said their wrath, as opposed to Themis' wrath, because while she did preside over law and justice and used her oracles to tell mortals how to atone for their sins, she didn't carry out the punishments. Instead, she just reported the transgressions to her counterpart Nemesis, the goddess of retribution, or to the gods whose domains were being disrespected, like Poseidon whenever someone peed in the ocean, or Hades whenever someone shot on a grave. As for Zeus, well, she had an interesting relationship with him. So she was the Titanus daughter of Uranus and Gaia, and actually nursed Zeus alongside the nymph, or goat, Amalthea. But despite her breastfeeding him, she would also go on to be Zeus's second bride after he swallowed his first wife, the Titan Metis. These two's union represented the establishment of natural law and order in the universe, and they were a powerful couple indeed. Not only does the poet Stasinus credit them with crafting the plan to bring about the Trojan War, but after Typhon attacked and was slain by Zeus, he and Themis displayed the monster's dismembered body from Olympus just to rub it in Gaia's face that her last ditch effort to defeat them was a failure. Obviously, the relationship didn't last forever because Zeus would go on to marry Hera, but there wasn't any bad blood between them after the split. Zeus continued to follow Themis' advice whenever she offered it, and never once did she use her influence over him to serve her own interests. Most surprising of all, though, is that even Hera couldn't hold a grudge against Themis. In fact, there's a part of the Iliad where Hera passes by all the other Olympians and goes directly to Themis for comfort after Zeus threatened her because she knew that Themis would understand Stand. I guess that just goes to show you how fair and balanced Themis really was and how beneficial of a temperament that is to have in your relationships. Of course, in real life, you have to look out for yourself because if you don't, who will? But it doesn't sound like Themis was so self-sacrificing that she put herself at a disadvantage like Libras tend to do sometimes. Instead, she simply set her ego aside when interacting with others, which is something that gods in particular had an extremely difficult time with. So I guess what I'm saying is that if she can do it, we can too. And if we commit, the world can could be a much better place as a result. That's probably a good note to wrap it up on. If I push it any further, it'll turn into an after-school special. So let me ask you, Solo fam, what are your thoughts on what you heard today? If you haven't already, I would also appreciate if you could make a wish upon those like and subscribe buttons, specifically if you wish more of my content to be in your sub box and recommended feed. Follow me on social media to stay updated on future episodes of Astrology Explained and consider checking out my Patreon to get access to our exclusive messed up server for as little as $1 a month. I'll see you all again next week with the next installment of our annual Spoopathon, where I break down the mythos of the goddess of witchcraft, Hecate. Until then, my name is John Solo. Happy birthday to any Libras watching. And remember, John shot first.